powered by the 2013 C-Max, the official car of CES. Nicole Scott here from Mobile Geeks, and here we are at CES 2013. I am standing in the middle of the Intel booth, and there's a lot of cool stuff around here. So I'm going to show you from this side all the way around, just so you feel like we're here. At Intel's press event at CES, they actually discussed some of the new regulations or uh, restrictions for their fourth generation Ultrabooks. Here we have a third generation, but on the fourth generation, we are going to have touch on everything. So that is going to be one of the requirements for an Ultrabook. And we're also going to be seeing wide eye ship with everything. So if you want to be beaming any of your content to any of your TVs or any of your kind of connected devices, that's going to be something you're going to be able to do with every fourth generation Ultrabook. So here we have the Gigabyte U2142. This is a new Ultrabook from Gigabyte. It was announced maybe two months ago, but this is the first time we've been seeing it in an actual working model. So Gigabyte is known for their convertibles with the hinge. So it is running Windows 8 as you can see here. It has a 1366 by 768 screen resolution and it's running a Core i5 processor. I think there is an option for Core i3 as well. So if we put it into tablet mode here, you can see that we have a few interesting features. This is the power button. There we have uh, USB 2.0, HDMI to USB 3.0s. Around the front we only have some status LEDs. Here around the side we have another Kensington lock. There are two headphone jacks, USB 2.0. Then we have our volume rocker and I believe that is a screen so let's take another look at the keyboard while we're here with this device. Spin it around. All right, so the keyboard is super bouncy. Um, Gigabyte hasn't really gotten this part down on the last few generations of their of their keyboards. That's been something that they totally do need to work on. But I do like that they have full right and left side shift uh, size shift keys here. Here's the full Windows 8 button uh, to bring you back and forth between desktop. And Gigabyte is always very aggressive with their function key stuff, so this actually should pull you to the camera. But it doesn't appear to be. Anyway, so they have a good size trackpad, which is uh, kind of textured, single mouse button. There's a fair amount of dead, dead space in the middle, which I always tend to hate with these single or these unified track button, mouse buttons. Um, yeah, so this is actually available on the market already. I believe it retails for around $1,000. Intel's also making moves in the smartphone market. Here we have another entry-level device from them. This is by one of the manufacturers. I'm not sure if it's Motorola or Lavo or which one, but anyways, this is running the new Intel processor, the 2420. So this is a single, uh, single core, a uh, one gigahertz smartphone. It's aimed at the entry-level market. You can see here it does have a removable battery there on the bottom. Uh, the display is a uh, 4.3, so I think it's a, it's a very very low resolution resolution phone uh, compared to the other Intel processors. Uh, there's a few things that it doesn't support. You'll see that it does not have HDMI. This isn't an HD display. Let's just pull up the camera. Here we go. One of the main differences is um, it, it has multi-shot burst, but only up to seven photos. So let's just take a photo there. Let's put it into multi-shot. So here it is over here. Maybe it'll tip over. All right, so that's supposed to take seven frames instead of ten compared to some of the other phones. So this has been a quick look at Intel's uh, move into the entry-level smartphone market. Back in September at IDF 2012, I got to check out something really cool, like Minority Report kind of cool. So Intel is releasing a perceptual computing SDK. So here we have one example. This is the creative camera right here on top of the computer. And Intel has an SDK that they're going to be launching so that you could actually um, develop gesture control. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring my hand in towards the camera. And you can see it there kind of come out of the snake's coils there. So you can see that I can individually move each of my fingers. And if I push it back, I can even bounce the gold. They tell me if I'm ambitious enough, I can try to flick the gold. But I'm not that talented. So this is just one of the cool things that Intel is working on. Before we see anything else in the booth, why don't we hear from our sponsor? Sync AppLink puts you in command of some of your favorite apps while on the go. Sync AppLink allows you to stay in the know with NPR's award-winning news app, navigate songs and stations on Pandora, 
access Slacker Radio's huge list of stations, or even keep up with your favorite baseball team via the MLB at bat app. Better yet, you can launch and control all of these apps with simple voice commands. Sync AppLink is just another example of Ford's commitment to keeping you connected while on the go. Thanks again to Ford for powering Mobile Geek CES Special. Last year, Asus was one of the only companies to have a hybrid style device. Let's just pop this out. So it is a tablet with an attachable keyboard. So Intel is actually showing that this segment is here. They're here with the, the tablet form factor. This is running an Intel Atom Z2760, 1.8 gigahertz, running full Windows 8. So you can definitely see that we have all the kinds of options that you would want with Windows in their devices. So this is just a, you know, a demonstration of exactly how many devices that we're seeing in the hybrid category. <laughs> there we go. Much simpler than I make it look. <laughs> Intel is also showing that they have gaming in spades. Now I don't know how to play this game, but you can see that this is the Razer Edge. So this is this is a new concept device from Razer. So it's running an i5 or an i7 processor, but you can see that it's a tablet mounted into a gaming, you know, cradle. So this is definitely meant for at-home use. I mean, gamers are kind of lazy. I'm sorry, gamers. But you, this four-pound device is definitely something that'll give you a little bit of an arm workout. And you can see that it's definitely, oh, let's press A for open. Oh, it's blocked. I need to, I guess I need to fight some guys before I can go anywhere. But anyways, you can see it's definitely smooth, even though I can't find any enemies. But another quick look at some of the cool stuff that Intel is up to with gaming and portability. I hope you felt like you were here at the Intel booth at CES 2013. Thanks so much for joining me. I'm your host, Nicole Scott. Thanks again to Ford.